Sonia Livingston, Professor in the Department of Media and Communication, expert on digital safety, particularly with regard to children, young persons on the internet. I'm not sure whether you're telling me to be very worried about kids online or very relaxed. I'm not sure whether you're saying this is just another moral panic, sort of like the teddy boys or knives and we need to relax, or whether you're saying, golly, this is new, this is different, this is dangerous. Which should I be, relaxed or scared? Neither. You should be attentive, engaged, thoughtful, but neither relaxed nor scared because the digital is reconfiguring children's lives, family life, ways of learning in a whole set of ways. But at the same time, the media are often making us panic about the risks to the extent that it almost stops us thinking in a kind of engaged and thoughtful way about what this really means. So I hear that as a relax, don't worry about the newspapers. In other words, you're sort of saying, right, there are all these newspapers hyping it up, but in fact, it's not a big deal, which sounds to me like an answer which isn't neither. It's one. Relax. Well, the difficulty is that um, children, families are fantastically diverse and many are, um, we could relax a bit more actually, many are working out their ways through this new world. Uh, they need guidance, they need good resources, but they are figuring it out and they're becoming, we hope, resilient and skilled. Some are vulnerable and some things are really going wrong for occasionally um, in a really dangerous way. And the difficulty we have and the difficulty policymakers and in fact the media have is we don't know which kids are going to be vulnerable and which kids are going but to be resilient. But sort of they would be vulnerable anyway. In other words, there's this kind of challenge which is to build resilient children, which we can talk about. But if they're not resilient, whatever the latest temptation is, the latest anxiety, whether it's a computer or not a computer, will be something to which they're vulnerable. Is that it? So it's well, just more of the same. There's some truth in that, um, that the kids who are already at risk offline are often the ones who are at risk online, but it's not only that. Um, partly because we don't know all of children's vulnerabilities and some vulnerabilities show up online in ways that we hadn't previously noted. Perhaps the child's a bit quiet normally and then suddenly online they discover that they can get into something quite kind of dangerous or aggressive or um, manipulative and then we realise that there's a problem. Is this a little bit paternalistic. I mean, I know you have mm. the mind, we must engage the children and so on, yeah. but it seems to me engage the children by asking them a bunch of questions. Yeah. Do you involve children in the designing of projects? Do you allow young persons to engage, not in the answering of questions, but in the framing of questions? How much of this is adults looking down at children? How much of this is children organising their own world? It's a, um, there is actually lots of attention to getting kids involved in the research process and also more in the policy process. I won't say that there's a lot of it and I haven't done that much, though I do do some. Uh, I mean, the point about it being a child is that they don't always want to be consulted about absolutely everything and they don't always know everything that adults know. So I wouldn't want to go to the extreme and say kids should be designing the project, they should be designing the internet and so forth. But Yes, there are ways of consulting them, and actually both the UK Council of Child and Safety and the European Commission do have particular projects that consult So them. partners, but not drivers. Is there a particular personal cost? I mean, this is a difficult area. The writing you've done has presumably taken you into the assessment of these kind of sites and so on. Yeah. You've presumably had to, as it were, investigate the mm -hmm. sources of potential exploitation, potential harm, not risk, mm -hmm. harm. Mm -hmm. Has this been something which has impacted on you personally? I would say that the work I did with the Internet Watch Foundation, which is um, works to take illegal child abuse images off, off the internet, I would say that was quite upsetting and that was quite kind of difficult and I was glad at a certain point to say, I've done my time there, someone else is going to take over and I will think again about more ordinary experiences of children. But um, it is upsetting some of the things that happen to children and there are some arguments that we need to get out. So for example, we've had a lot of panic about stranger danger. What no one is so keen on hearing is that the biggest danger to children comes from those within their immediate circle. And online, we begin to see the same things happening. So online, offline risk from the immediate circle, from the family often, is also what's being extended online. Um, we can't get away from that, so someone has got to think about that. Sonia Livingston, thank you so much for submitting yourself to the Gear 2 Grilling. Pleasure. Thank you.